Emmy winner David Reichert joins us now from The Deadliest Catch. David, you're submitting The Russians Are Coming, which was the first episode of this past season. Why, why was that your choice for the Emmy judges? Well, you know, as the first program of the season, I think it shows the scope of, of our, our cinematography because, you know, there's parts of it that happen in Dutch Harbor, then the boats go out, and then, of course, we have even part of it happening in Russia. So really, we get to see all the, the things that, that, that we are doing in that episode, um, you know, which, you know, you can imagine Dutch Harbor, we, ha we have a whole different set of uh, camera systems and, and um, different ways that we'll shoot these uh, crabbers. And then once they go out on the boats, it's just all on the boats. And so it, it, we get to see all of that. It's the extreme Bering Sea that we're, we're talking about here. Um, tell us just about the harsh conditions that you and your crew have to go through on a given 24 hour period. I mean, yeah, I mean, like the show, what we're doing, it's really all about the conditions, the Bering Sea, uh, these giant waves, the cold, you know, the wet, all that kind of stuff. So you know, a big part of what we're doing is just trying to get these images in these conditions. So, you know, we have to survive, our cameras have to survive, and, um, and we need to be able to get it all, you know, get the story, be able to be recording, you know, all the time because we are following the action. We, you know, in, a, you know, in this show, we, we just have to be there and be ready. So, you know, you can imagine the, you know, salty, cold, wet is certainly not good for camera equipment. So, you know, there's a few things that we have to think about. We're going to lose a lot of equipment. We know that. Um, and then we have to figure out how best we can protect the cameras so that it can, can keep working. And then we also have designed a bunch of specialty equipment that can survive out there. And then, um, you know, over the years, bring back something new. Like we really want to see the boats and these guys out in this place and to get away from them, to get to, to be able to see them in the environment is something that we work really hard on with, you know, being able to, to mount cameras in places that we couldn't before that can record 24 seven, um, which will stay at the top of the mast or now our new gimbals on the chase boats, all that kind of stuff. And on top of that, we have to survive and we just have, managed over the years to like collect an incredible crew that that keep coming back which is sometimes surprising year after year on a given season how long are you gone well you know the it's the crabbing dictates everything so when they catch their quota uh they come in so they can go out there jam out there in a couple of weeks and get their quota. If everything, if the weather's good and the crab fishing is good and they have no mechanical breakdowns and they get lucky or it can drag on for months. So, um, you know, and within each season, it always, there's just a variety of th different things that can happen. So I'd say, you know, a usual season, you know, you're gonna be out there four weeks, but don't be surprised if you're out there two months, maybe more. And you're out there, you are on the boats 24 seven, you'll come in, you'll offload your crabs, you'll, you're lucky if that takes eight hours and then you're back out. So it's a, it's a tough one. When you've been anticipating for days and weeks that you're leaving out again, what's that morning like when, when you know, hey, I'm, <laughs> I don't know about what's about to happen or how long I'm gonna be gone. Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's a little nerve wracking, especially, you know, I, I remember my first time out on the boat. I, I was completely terrified because, you know, I knew everything to expect, but I mean, everything was going to be hard and that's what I knew. And so it's just terrifying as you, you know, you sail out of the harbor, you just see the islands um, disappear over the horizon and you know, you know, you got weeks before you see land again, probably months before you are out of, out of, out at home. But then you kind of get in this groove, um, you know, you really have to be, become part of the the crab fishing crew to to be accepted by them you know you need to be there for everything and also um you know just to survive you need just need to have that mentality 
what went behind the choice of having cinema level cameras instead of uh, say less expensive ones and less, le you know, that was the high quality I'm sure that you get from the cinema cameras uh, is very important to you. It is. And, you know, we've been pushing that for years, trying to, you know, just bring home um, really the, to be able to see this place in all its beauty. But, you know, one of the things that these cameras give us is they give us a little more um, um, forgiveness in our image as far as dynamic range. You know, we, you know, we can't set a shot up. We can't light it perfectly every time because we are chasing these act, the actions. So with these cinema quality cameras, the image, you know, even if we don't capture it perfect, we can bring it in and, and, and basically color correct it, bring it down to become a, just as beautiful as we can. And then also what has happened is we have um, better operators. Like over the years, as I said, we, we have found this group of people that can manage being out there and also um, shoot, you know, these cameras and this equipment because they, um, you know, they are, have to follow all this action, but then we expect them also to bring home a bunch of specialty photography that we use in every sequence to, to just make it more, more interesting, more beautiful, not just a handheld camera, all kinds of images that we require for every sequence. I hope you have a really good relationship with the editors on the show because of all the shows on television, you might have more unused footage than just about anybody. I think that, yes, uh, I think it's 400 hours that we end up with. And um, I mean, that's a, that is, you know, such a job that, that um, such an important job for the show to be able to, to find really the best stuff in all that footage. Now I communicate with them all the time, um, you know, um, reminding them of certain shots or certain things that I just really liked, you know, and I'm communicating with every, every uh, boat crew that's out there, all the cinematographers that are, that are out there, you know, and, and they'll be particularly proud of that stuff. And so it's just kind of a communications um, uh, line that we have to keep open, but also, you know, they just grind through it, to be honest. They just sit there and look through that footage and they'll find things that surprise me sometimes, you know, as, as they have, they literally look at every second of that footage and they'll, they'll, they have their favorites that they'll put into bins and then boom, you know, there it ends up on the show. No arguments with them though from you, uh, how dare you not include this or that? Well, definitely, you know, I don't know if it'd be an argument, but I, you know, you're always, um, you got to be passionate, though. Yeah, you know, there's always things that you you really were very proud of, or it nearly killed you to get it. So you know, you you think it should be there, but um, and there's all and and sometimes you know you'll you'll say, hey, what about this one shot? If you you know you approach it as you should, and um, sometimes they'll, they'll be like, oh yeah, that's great, but usually they're like, well, there was a reason, and um, so you know, it's a it's give and take, but you know, it it is really nice to just kind of be with them and see their process. And really, I think we end up with the best looking uh, show um, that we could with, with the work they do. When you and your team return home from one of these seasons, uh, what kind of celebration do you have? Are, are, are you a fun bunch to be around that first, that first night back? Yeah, yeah. Well, honestly, I think what happens is when we all come back, we kind of come back at different times because the boats will just finish. So that's not the, the, the most... Um, the, the biggest celebration of the season, but the day before the boats go out, because it's the 14th um, the, of October or, you know, when the boat, when the crab season opens. And so all the boats are in Harbor till that day and then boom, they all head out. So the night before those boats head out, it is, everybody is just getting ready to go relaxing, you know, your last little, finding the last little bit of solace in each other before, you know, you go out. So that's a rowdy night. There's no doubt about that. In Dutch Harbor, you can imagine, because the crabbers are doing the same thing. So you got to be careful on that night. Don't stay out <laughs> well, Speaking of celebrations, as we wrap up, tell us about your 2015 Emmy win. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's such an honor um, to win an Emmy, in fact. Um, and, I, and I'm, you know, I'm so proud of this show because I feel like, you know, it's something that, um, you know, we just, it's been going a long time. You know, we're on, we're starting, 
you know, we're in season 16 here. And every year we, we never just sit around and be like, okay, well, gosh, season 16, we've kind of, kind of got this, you know, it's, it's such an effort to make it better and, and see it in a new way. Um, and, and it's always surprising how we, how many things we find that, that we are, 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 are seeing in a new, better or different way. Um, so, you know, when we, after that many years, you know, that I'm able to win an Emmy about, uh, for that work, it was just, just such a great feeling. Um, huge honor. And I don't know, just validates your life. <laughs> <laughs>